Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Reselling Rhythms. I'm your host, Adam, with Adam's Exploits. On our show, what we like to do is introduce resellers to the various other resellers that have uh, advanced skills and abilities and have them share their tips and tricks with us to make my viewers and myself better resellers, um, especially with what's going on in the world today. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people or buyers are purchasing online, so it makes it more uh, advantageous to us to be a reseller and to sell online. So we want to know, you know, what's worth selling, uh, how we do, how do we sell it, what should we sell, what shouldn't we sell. Um, we're going to discuss some of the age-old uh, questions today. Should I be selling used clothing on uh, eBay or Poshmark? Should I offer free shipping? Should I offer free returns? Well, if you're a reseller or want to learn about reselling, you're in the right place. Thank you all for joining us. I'm going to say hello to two or three people in the chat, and then we'll get this party started, and we'll bring on... My uh, guest today, Mr. Paul Antonelli. I see Sharon has made it in the house. I see a never too old. Thanks for joining us. Maggie is in the house. I always appreciate being here, Maggie. Is you as well, Sharon? And I'm sure our uh, moderator with the most of this, Michelle, will be joining us shortly. I guess the signal just went out. So uh, let's get started. People will be filtering in. Um, guys, I'm learning from looking at my analytics with YouTube that I, I need to get started pretty quickly to keep everybody's interest up so that's what we're going to do we're going to get started so let me uh bring paul on as well make sure i unmute him first there we go mr paul how antonelli how are you sir good how are you good 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 i was uh telling paul in uh pre-chat we just went through a, a nasty thunderstorm so that's all gone so uh we have power we have internet we're good to go <laughs> cool. we're getting our bad storms tomorrow and the rest of the week okay uh, thanks for joining us, Beth. We're going to get started here, guys, because like I said, I want to I want to make sure I can catch catch the the newer viewers. You know, get them with the, the hook. You know, that we have a valuable show here. So uh, I want to first thank Paul for joining me. I appreciate him being here for us. Uh, he had a big estate sale over the weekend, and it uh, really physically uh, and mentally beat him up quite a bit. So I appreciate him being here. Thank so, you. All right. Uh, so, guys, the uh, the main question I had was uh, basically is selling used clothing worth it um is it worth your time and effort um <laughs> i know you guys and i, and I tell you and I, and I was just telling paul earlier today on a pre-chat uh, i'm my own worst enemy and you always hear me talk about women's jeans and how uh, you know you gotta you gotta improvise and uh, necessity is the mother of invention well sometimes i shouldn't be a do not i should take my own advice and, and and you know change things up so uh yeah i got those jeans for a dollar a piece but they're sitting here what good are they doing sitting here so I was thinking about, Paul and I were, I was gracious enough to come on the show. I'm thinking about what kind of topics are kind of like hot buttons with resellers. And uh, one of them was, is it worth selling used clothing? Well, in my opinion, the answer is yes and no. <laughs> or it depends. Uh, again, and it was funny because Casey the Rockstar Flipper, who I often talk about, did a video uh, two days ago uh, about selling used clothing and about selling used clothing that is profitable and then turns over quickly sells quickly has, has a fast sell for rate um typically used clothing if you're doing a one percent average you know, daily sell through rate you're doing very well um these things casey's telling us are two three four sometimes five times the normal sell through rates so i want to get into that a little bit um i want to ask you guys for your opinions i'm sure some of you are used clothes selling people uh some aren't uh some of you like to sell hard goods which i told you guys i want to get more involved in the hard goods but is it is it, is it worth and again when i first got into business like like well if i get these jeans for a dollar and i sell them for 15 dollars and i include free shipping i'm going to make five dollars and i'm going to sell 10 pair a day i'm going to make 50 dollars well no you weren't selling 10 pair a day <laughs> when you when and, and when i was doing well i was selling two or three pair a day and like with everything else, you know, the cost of things went up, you know, shipping went up, uh, you know, USPS, the uh, padded flat rate envelopes, which and if you guys saw jeans, you know, to sell, uh, ship them with the paddle flat rate envelopes, that's the most cost effective way typically to ship them unless you get them, you know, they're small, like, uh, you know, children's sizes that you can fit like in under one pound can do ship first class. But uh, that was the other killer with the, um, with shipping. Uh, when uh, USPS decided to start implementing uh, with first class, not only weight, but distance. Distance, yeah. And my my sales typically, I'd say 90% of my sales either go to Texas or California. 
So as I told you guys, I'm in South Jersey, right across from Philadelphia. So the majority of my clothes at a minimum are going to Texas and quite a few are, are going out to California. So it, it's, you know, the further zone or next to further zone. So uh, we'll get into that then. Is, is it worth offering free shipping? Uh, and then the other topic I want to cover is, uh, is it off offering free returns? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we'll discuss that, guys. So please share your opinions in the chat. So, uh and I know some people do that, and I don't know how they do it, especially on brands and the items like, like electronics. I mean, how do you ship something for $15 or $20 and offer a free return that's going to cost you $15 or $20 to ship it back to you? So, you know, you're talking $30 out of pocket just for shipping. And then, of course, you know, sometimes right. it comes back broken or sometimes it comes back, you know, the person, you know, does the old uh, bait and switch. Uh Sharon, who was we were, and I were chatting the other day, we we're talking about uh, Jamie Pace, who's active in Casey's uh, Facebook groups. He does a lot of electronics, and he he gets from time to time. He does a lot of like like typewriters and an eyeball kind of things, hard goods, and he gets back a lot of times. Somebody will have like a broken typewriter, and they'll, they'll order his typewriter and send something back. It's not even the same model. It's, they just send it back. So, oh, you know, it was broken. So that's what. Yeah, there's there's a couple of of thoughts on the free shipping and a lot of it goes back to you go to walmart they offer free returns oh they were until now (laughs) that'll be back to yeah yeah target so if you if they didn't offer returns would you buy from them so it's a business i mean what we do what we do is a business and if it's your business, you should be professional about it. And I mean, <clears throat> I see so much, so much, so many different things. People charging thirty dollars for shipping, and when you get it, they don't mask the price off the label. How raw did they do it at, at the post office, and they show the postage right on it? <laughs> yeah, they show the postage was, and they pay like twelve. They charge you thirty. Yeah, and I it's. It's crazy, and the, you want to be a professional seller. So, yeah, by offering free returns, that could help your business because maybe you'll get more business from it. Mm-hmm. But let's let's forget all that just for a minute. I've been talking to you now for several months, and you've always talked about those genes. What has held you back? from selling, from listing those genes. It has to be something. You've always uh, talked. Fear, there. Fear, there. Of, fear of effort and failure. Fear that I'm going to spend all this time and effort, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to discuss this. All this time and effort, you know, taking pictures, uh, retaking pictures, <clears throat> um, listing them. Uh, I'm not concerned about the cost. I mean, you know, what's again, I have a store, I have a basic store. So what it does really technically doesn't cost me to list them. Um, but it's like, do I make this effort and list all these genes and then they're just going to sit here or do I just bulk, bulk sell them or do I redonate? But um, yeah, you're right, Michelle. It's an albatross. You're right. But, uh, but the thing is, you, you, you say, do I list them? And then they're just going to sit here by not listing them. They're just sitting here. Well, there's no chance of them selling, right? Right. So, I mean, I, I mean, I personally, I hate listing clothes. Mm-hmm. Hate, I it, hate it, hate it, <laughs> especially jeans and stuff. But, I mean, all it takes is get your put it on your bed with a gray sheet or a white sheet. Oh, no, I, I, have, I have an eBay room. I have a spare bedroom set up with uh, the three. I told you guys before, you know, I had the three salt boxes, and then I, I was telling the uh, – Sharon, I got the uh, I caught Lonnie's she shed light, the she shed light, the, the high, you know, bright yep. LED light, uh, on the gooseneck, and I got that. So, I mean, I have plenty of lighting, it's just a matter of if I don't feel well, it's like, you know, I don't feel well. Do I really want to mess with these jeans? So, how long would it actually take you to list one pair of the jeans? On average, about 10 minutes because I'd have to probably take the probably about eight to 10 pictures because I would take pictures and the, I'd have to modify the pictures. And then why would you have to modify the pictures? Like boom, boom, boom. It would take me five minutes. Why would why you have, have to modify, modify the pictures? Pardon me? Why would you have to modify the, the color? Pictures? The colors don't come out, right? We were talking uh, before about using vivid uh, on your iPhone. That, that helps a little bit. Yeah. Um, 
we were talking about that the other day uh, using the Vivid. And uh, it's like we were talking, I think uh, Maggie, we're talking to Maggie about using the Vivid on her cell phone. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I spend, I probably spend three to five minutes listing because I have templates built up already, which that's that's the other key. If you're if you're a new seller, um, and again, I'm not re real good about recording videos. I told you guys, gonna, I am going to make some. That's that's from my lips to God's ears. I am going to do some recorded videos. I have some planned. Um, look in the templates. Look into other resellers such as Casey or whomever your other your favorite resellers that show you guys how to make listing templates, and it does save you a lot of time. Save you I, I have I have templates saved on mine for for pants and for shirts. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have a uh, spot where it says you know rise length. You know. Yep. Yep. Just they, Manufacturer um, button exactly. front zipper right. front right. Right. all right. that stuff. But so ten minutes. So in a half hour, you could get all those jeans that you have probably listed, especially if you do it with the app on the phone, which I understand is going away July 1st or something. I don't I don't like listing from my phone. I like taking pictures from my phone and listing from the computer. So you list it on the computer. You save it as a draft. You go back to the item with your phone. You open no, up I the take draft. the pictures first. I take the pictures first. And then, then I start, and then I transfer the pictures over. But an easier way to do it, I think, is do the listing on the computer. Right. You, you did a listing. Everything, everything you pictures. could, mm -hmm. except the pictures. Right. Save it as a draft. Right. You go back to the item. You open up the draft in the, in the app, and all you're doing is adding the pictures. And then you hit go, and you're listed. Right, you still have, to, and I still end up modifying the pictures in the app though, and on the computer. I don't. Yeah, I would do. Uh, it you know, have the, have the other adjustments like you know, the sharpness, brightness. Yep. Yep. Contrast. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I mean, for now, you could. I mean, what if you listed two of them and they went under? Yeah, I was going to say under contract. I got contract on my mind. What <laughs> if they went under on? What if they went? Had a lot of inquiries or whatever right. within the first day. You'd be kicking yourself for not listing them all these. Oh months. yeah, oh yeah. Well, I said, well, basically, what I have are mostly mall brands. So I mean, they're um, they're okay. in the now and again. Ma Megan is in here, and Ma Megan is a super duper uh, gene seller. She is phenomenal, and she's been on my show. Yes, I've I've talked right. to her a couple of times. She's very knowledgeable about selling jeans. Uh, so Megan, I mean, Megan, you're in the chat. What, what is your opinion on the, uh, just on a basic, uh, pair of jeans? Um, I'm sure I have some of them lying around here somewhere <laughs> and I'll say them right now. Um, just on like a, uh, you know, a Lauren, a pair of jeans or a, uh, Tommy Hilfiger pair of jeans. Um, those, those, aren't jeans. Basic. Hmm? those aren't basic. Well, I'm not, I'm not talking about Wrangler, and, and again, I, I have difficulty finding Levi's. Okay. Oh, wow. I have trouble finding Levi's, and I have difficulty finding men's jeans. I prefer to sell men's jeans as, as opposed to women's jeans. Have yeah. you had the, have you more had more experience selling women's jeans or men's jeans? I have never sold. You've never sold jeans. Women's clothing, unless Sandy gives it to me and says, "Here, sell this." <laughs> <laughs> um, that's one of those things, you know, breaking out of your comfort zone. Casey recommended that too. Yeah, breaking out of your comfort zone. Yeah, but I—I I mean, that's I think that's yeah. So like Megan says, Tommy Hilfiger is, is basic. It's, uh, it's, it's a bread and butter brand. Oh, okay. I think that's the biggest thing, the biggest fear that people have about listing clothes. And I've I've looked at a lot of listings that on when you have something pre-owned, you have to measure it. Because everybody's going to say, well, you don't know how many times it's been washed and did it shrink and all this other stuff. So, yeah, you have to measure everything. Right. And it takes time. I did like um, the program. Let me just look it up here. That would do the listing for you. And, of course, I don't have it here. I had one. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I have two two of the, the bigger jeans sellers in, in, in my community or in my, my chat today. <laughs> but, I forget but they even don't love selling men's jeans, which I, I would prefer to sell men's jeans. And Megan is, like, one of the, the, the jean queen sellers of, of all time. Wow. Um, that, so no, see, I, would, I just bought a um, 
a load of brand new clothing. Well, that's fine. And and I I've I've sold all my all my new clothing that I had that I did yep. like OA or RA. I sold everything except for two Philadelphia Eagles hats. Everything else that I had listed that was new went because people couldn't purchase at retail level, so they were buying online. So right. every, I mean, literally every single item I had that was new done gone. Oh, now I'm just stuffed with used clothing, which is like 95% women's jeans. Right. The other, <clears throat> excuse me, the only other the used cl pre-owned clothing that I like to sell. That's yeah, so the used pre-owned instead of used. Go ahead. Yeah, is the, <laughs> the stuff that's hard to get for everybody. Because like I just sold uh, a week ago um, a Disney Riviera Resort shirt. That right. the only way you could get it is if you worked with the company, with if you were to Disney Imagineer, because it says Disney Imagineer. Okay. Um, and I do find those, or I, I'm able to get those once in a great while. Even when they were building Volcano Bay for Universal, I got a shirt from the construction company. Okay. And people love them because you really can't, that's clothing that you just can't find. Um, so that's the stuff that I uh, that I would get and try to resell. Well, Lisa time. was saying, what was Lisa saying? She says, I know a lot of resellers use that for measurements. I didn't see her earlier post. Oh, I don't know. But oh, so. <clears throat> yeah, I forget the program that um, they're only now they just fashion. When they first came out, they were doing everything. And I had them list. Well, I had them do a lot of stuff. Um, and well, then it's not listed perfectly because they started out with clothing. Who is it? It's not listed perfectly because they started out no. only clothing when they first no, started. No, I forget the name of the company. Um, I still have one listing. I have a, uh, a pocketbook that I sent. I had to send them everything. And they said, yeah, you should list it for $175. Wow. wow. I haven't done it yet. It's still in a bag put away. Well, Paul, that's like 20 pairs of jeans, that one handbag that you haven't listed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got me there. All right, let me get in again. Enough, enough beating up on Adam and not selling the jeans. You are correct, sir, but let's let's let's, let's make this yeah. painful. I just got to beat up on the host, okay? Sellhound. Michelle has it. Yes, Sellhound. Sellhound. Okay, yes. I told you, Michelle knows everything. And neither is a phone a friend on any of your, uh, any of your shows. Okay, yeah. let me touch on Casey's uh, video. Then. Um. And I did I did link it in the description below the video that Casey did two days ago. Uh, basically, it was 15 uh, profitable, and again, I might be, you know, jumbling the title a little bit, but 15 profitable, uh, quick selling items to sell on eBay and Poshmark. Use used clothing items. Okay, so again, we're talking about used clothing here, and is is it worth it? It is not worth it. Um, like Bill and Dave, they concentrate on men's jeans predominantly and now they're getting into shoes and athletic wear so you know they're kind of they're, they're kind of their niches as far as when it comes to clothing so let me touch on Casey went over and again uh, I have the link in the description and we're also going to get into um, uh, classic or should I say vintage uh, band shirts rock t-shirts I would do that in a minute it's easy to list a t-shirt Right. Yeah. Those now, are, those now, are the issue with that is determining if it's a, a reproduction or repo, as they call it, or if it's a counterfeit. So that's the other issue too. So let me let me touch on this and uh, Paul and anybody in the chat, please uh, welcome to give your input. Or if you're watching this after the fact, you're welcome to uh, to leave comments in the uh, the comment section below. So uh, number one that Casey said was leather, uh, aviator, and uh, bomber jackets. So uh, that is that is true, uh, and the other issue, like, and again, we we talked about this before, guys. Maybe you see something that's underpriced on a certain website or a certain platform, you purchase that and then resell that. I mean, you could like Amazon discourages that, but you can do say you say you use the bomber jacket you find on eBay, you can purchase that on eBay and sell it again on eBay at a higher price. You can take the jacket and sell it on Poshmark at a higher price. Yeah. Let's say you see something listed, let's just say for forty dollars for a bomber jacket, and you're thinking, "Holy cow, that bomber jacket that's worth over a hundred dollars." And it happens, and apparently it happens quite a bit. 
So I guess if you if you're if you're busy watching your Netflix or whatever you're doing in the evening, you're relaxing. Uh, you know, break out your iPad or break out your your smartphone and start looking for things that are, you know, that you feel might be profitable that may be undervalued. So uh, Sharon saying tunics sell well. Okay, so that was the first one that Casey said. So uh, leather, uh, aviator, or bomber jackets, and it does the name brand is really not important. At least at least these particular ones. Uh, the other thing is Lululemon yoga pants. Uh, so, I mean, apparently, and again, Paul and I are not really yoga pant sized. <laughs> so, you're not going to find Paul looking for those. That's you're for not, sure. Well, you're not going to find Paul or Adam wearing Lululemon yoga pants. <laughs> and why do they call them yoga pants when women wear them every day, every minute when they go out? I'm not, regular... I'm not touching that, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> I'll only get in trouble if I say something about that. And let me let me go back. Say, I, I just had my 60th birthday. I have no problem with women wearing yoga pants. Yeah, <laughs> let's just say that. Let me, let me go back to the to the. That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> let me go back to the leather. Also, as as a lot of you know, I'm in Central Florida. Right. Um, there's a couple of stores in the um, in the malls, discount malls, whatever they're called. I forget now. They sell leather all the time, and it's like. Why would you sell that in Florida? That's the last thing anybody's going to buy. But they're always at a great price. You know okay. the okay. you know the leather jackets, they're not bomber jackets, but they the one the NASCAR ones with like the big Pepsi or the McDonald's or the numbers of the of the cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. They have those all the time. They sell you around apparently, yeah. Um and it's like, well, nobody from here is going to buy them. But I'm sure the the uh, tourists. Oh yeah, you're not gonna yeah you're not gonna wear a leather jacket in Florida. I mean, when you, you probably can even wear a leather jacket ever in Florida, right? I mean, you're gonna in January, and February. What is it? What's it? What's it? Fifties, sixties, sixties. Yeah, okay. yeah. Which is cold for us. It's cold for you guys. Yeah, you won't well, yeah, maybe wear a leather jacket if it's cold for you. <laughs> yeah, but still, I mean, when it's sixty here, people are wearing snow parkers and gloves <laughs> and, stuff, and stuff like that. <laughs> All right, so. All right, so if you find Lululemon yoga pants, uh, and apparently Casey is saying that from his women friends and his uh, fiance and other resellers he's talked to, it's because Lululemon are very well made and they last a very long time. And that's when he brought up that he wears silver jeans, which are basically like $120 a pair, and he usually buys them at um, one of the, I think it's Men's Warehouse or something. They run a sale like buy one, get one half off. So, but anyway... <laughs> Does he wear those over his uh, yoga pants? <laughs> no, he, no, he doesn't wear yoga pants. <laughs> but he wears silver jeans. Okay. So, again, men's jeans, higher level if you can find them. Okay. The third, and we mentioned, I'm going to get into this a little, a little bit more detail because I'm trying to go through all these you know, relatively quickly. I will spend a little bit of time on this after the fact. Uh, is vintage band T-shirts. Um, if you guys watch Katie and Vicky, who've, who've been on my show, uh, and you see I have listed the recommended channels I have listed on my channel. I'm going to have Casey, I have Katie and Vicky, uh, I have Rally Roots, uh, I have um, Steve Rakin. Um, Steve Rakin is more because of his metal, like, you know, you know, be the best you can be kind of thing. The others are all very are excellent, excellent resellers. So, but again, guys, you do yourself a favor. If, if you enjoy that type of videos, watch the Rally Roots, watch, uh, you know, Casey the Rockstar Flipper, Katie and Vicky. Katie and Vicky, especially on vintage clothing, and especially Katie. Katie will go out and she'll, they have a lot of like um, shows where they'll actually show you like, well, we paid this for this particular item and it sold for this price. And it's like, you paid how much for that? And it sold for how much? Blows my mind some in the margin. And again, guys, and again, I and again, I preach this to you. And then again, I'm not an expert expert, but I know have basic knowledge. Um, with eBay, you got to feed the beast. And like what Paul is saying, and, and uh, Beth is saying, and everyone else is saying, Adam, get that stuff listed. Because the more listing that you do, the more activity eBay sees. So the algorithm, Cassini says, "Oh, this guy is listing stuff. Maybe he has some good stuff to sell. Let's let's uh, raise it up on the on the search ranks, and maybe we'll sell some of his stuff." And then if you do offers to buyers, or offers to yeah, offer to buyers, do offers to buyers. If you do any kind of price uh, changes, or you do any kind of listing changes, or you have a sale on your account, that increases the algorithm, kicks the algorithm in, into action too, as well. 
So again, so vintage band t-shirts. Um, some of the things to look for in vintage band t-shirts are uh, single stitch. Uh, Casey was saying loop stitch. I'm not exactly familiar with what a loop yeah. stitch is. I was going to do some research on that. You'll, you'll, you'll know it when you see it. because it's, it? Oh, yeah, it's right there. Okay. Uh, and then sometimes the label would actually say, like, you know, 1982, 1976 on it. Um, I, don't think, I don't think it's the label. I think it's the... You're talking the, about the, the screen print? print? Silk screen and it's on the bottom sometimes. Right, but sometimes you got to watch that because a lot of times they could be repos too, reproductions. Right, stuff. right. Um, and then made in USA. Again, that's not it's not a be all and end all, but it is is one of the tips. Made in USA. I mean, pretty much everything now is made in India or made in China or wherever. It's not made in USA anymore. Um, and uh, it says, uh, let's see, made in USA. Pro tip: usually, uh, oh. If it's from a particular concert as well, it typically is more valuable. So if you have like a Rolling Stones concert T-shirt, typically is more, you know, whatever. And again, I'm not a Rolling Stones person, but, you know, uh, whatever their, their, their concerts have, they concert tours, the concert tour T-shirts are worth more than the generic Rolling Stone T-shirt. Yeah. Were, were you ever into the, uh, the buying the concert T-shirts? I've only been to one concert in my whole life. <laughs> I guess well, not. One I've been to plenty of. Um, yeah, the cost. I'm gonna mute myself here, guys. I've I've been to plenty of um, events, but um, only one actual concert, and that was Kiss in 1976. But I've been to, like I've seen the Commodores, and I've seen. There you go, Gary. Saying Vin vintage Kiss shirts. They, again, I, I've heard that mentioned quite a bit. Vintage Kiss shirts, so very, very well. Yeah, because Gene is a marketing genius. Gene Simmons is a marketing genius. Yep. He will do a shirt for. I mean, somebody farted, and he'll do a shirt on it, and it'll sell like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Hi, Ty. Uh, yeah. So vintage band T-shirts. Uh, and again, I linked. Um, Rally Roots, uh, Ryan's video where he actually shows you he's going out like on a, on a sourcing run at, at Goodwill or whatever. Uh, and then he tells, talks about the um, the vintage T-shirts. And again, the definition of vintage, guys, believe it or not, something from 2000 now is considered vintage. Yeah. 20 years or older is considered vintage. So if you have a T-shirt from 2000 or before, it's considered vintage. I think I have socks that are, are older than, than uh, 20 years old. <laughs> I, don't know, I think I do too. Right. So again, so that would be vintage, okay? And again, I linked I linked uh, Ryan's uh, video below where he where he shows you and he, he points out some of the tips and you know it might not necessarily be vintage, but these are some of the things. And again, if you want to watch some other videos about you know how to determine if something is vintage or not. There's plenty of videos on YouTube about that. But I, I want to put at least one of each. I want to put Casey's video, and I want to put uh, Ryan's video up on the uh, description below. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of doing a very limited T-shirt run. Help Adam list these jeans. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, I got, I got the button here. I can take you off the stream. Yeah. Um, number five, Lily Pulitzer. And again, I'm not a Lloyd Pulitzer fan, but I am familiar with the brand, and I'm not familiar with women's fashion, but apparently that's one of the hot ladies' fashion, women's fashions. Uh, women's dresses in particular, but I think um, uh, we said earlier in the chat that uh, tunics as well sell well. Uh, sell very quickly. They have a fast sell-through rate, three to four times a typical used or pre-owned clothing rate. Um, they sell year-round, too, as well. Typically in the thirty to fifty dollar price range. Uh, number six, kind of back to the the leather jackets and whatnot. Harley Davidson logo things. Uh, yeah. Harley Davidson t shirts, Harley Davidson jackets, Harley Davidson vest or leather vest. And again, with the Harley Davidson t shirts, guys, you got to be careful because you don't want to just pick up uh, like Harley Davidson New York because there's tens of thousands of them because everybody goes to New York City and they, they go in a Harley store and pick one up. But uh, like Casey was saying, like uh, he found something from, uh, and I, I might be pronouncing this country wrong. I think it's Qatar. Is how you pronounce this? Q-A-T-A-R. So he found a Harley shirt from, from Qatar. So apparently that was very valuable because it, it's, it's very unique. Right. But, but I see people selling, uh, and we've talked about this before, guys, with the, uh, the YouTube auctions. I've seen a lot of uh, Harley things being sold. 
but typically I see them offering them for 30, 40, 50 dollars. So the old saying, I don't know how much meat on the bone is, but if you happen to pick them up at a, at a yard sale or a garage sale, or you happen to pick them at a um, at a uh, Goodwill, maybe Goodwill has it for three ninety nine or two ninety nine or four ninety nine for a t shirt. You know, so four ninety nine and, and the thirty nine ninety nine is one thing. You know, uh, nineteen ninety nine into twenty ninety nine or twenty two ninety nine is another thing. So yeah. if you can pick them up, like I said, if you can pick them up at a yard sale, or pick them up at a garage sale for one or two dollars, flip them for thirty, forty, fifty dollars. That's great. But if you got to pay thirty dollars at an auction, if if it's for yourself, great. But I mean, there's not there's not enough meat on the bone, so to speak, to resell. Right. I'm not saying everything, but a lot of times, what I've seen as far as Harley things, I try to get involved in it. And I'll get involved in the bidding. It's like, well, I'm done. I can't, I can't make any money on this. So. But like here in Florida too, you know, they have Bike Week twice a uh, twice a year, and <clears throat> excuse me, the Harley dealership in Daytona will always put out a shirt, and they'll have okay. the Harley logo. Okay, well, Daytona, sure, because they'll right the bike rally. Yep. yep, and it says Bike Week, and I've sold well, a few. I'm sure from the '90s and the late '80s. And stuff. Yeah. Um, to pick up the other bike. thing, you you go back to that Goodwill. I've been to a lot of Goodwills here. I think even down south, and and there was one that I went to in Boca. That their shirt, their T-shirts were all a buck. Okay. You, you come up here, and they're as much as nine dollars. In the Orlando area, or nine dollars for a T-shirt? In, in a, yeah, I mean they range four ninety nine. You oh, know, five. They start, they start at five dollars. Okay. But down there, every they had. Three racks of T-shirts, and they all—they were all a buck. Okay. Um, then they had polos that were like three bucks, which wasn't bad at all. They but had polos that, for three dollars, but the T-shirts started at, at six dollars. Yeah, but see, you, when you look at other shirts and stuff at, at Goodwill, they're going nuts lately. Nineteen ninety-nine, twenty-nine ninety-nine, thirty-nine ninety, because it has a name. Football jerseys, basketball jerseys, 50, 60 bucks. I could will. Yeah. I mean, they're really, people were talking about it a lot, you know. And so you got to find, I think you got to find other sources to get that stuff. Okay. Well, well, that's the kicker, too. I mean, this would be the perfect ideal time, really, to, to do yard sales and garage sales because this is the weather, you know, you know, May, June, July, but. Yeah, and you know September, October, but maybe September, October, we'll start seeing some. And p people talk, you know. Well, Paul, you live in Central Florida. I'm 30 minutes from Disney. They say you must find a lot of Disney shirts and and merchandise. And to tell you the truth, the last time we went home to Massachusetts, we found more Disney stuff in Massachusetts, Maine, and New Hampshire than we did here. Really, a ton more shirts. Definitely, because it was obvious that all the tourists just go there, get the the merchandise, and then and bring it back home. They don't need the local charity store. Okay, so that was Harley Davidson. Uh, number seven is Robert Graham. Anybody that knows Casey knows he loves his Robert Graham shirts, and the crazier looking, the better. So Robert Graham shirts, and then Vineyard Vines, the dress shirts. Uh, Casey's saying they. Uh, a basic Robert Graham would sell typically between thirty and forty dollars. So again, you have to figure out what you're paying for it. So you're paying six, seven dollars. Okay, you can flip that for thirty or forty. Okay, I would pay twenty to flip it for thirty because you know you got fees and whatnot. Um, and he says the Vineyard Vine dress shirts sell very well. The the Robert Graham uh, shirts with a lot of graphics, with like crazy graphics, they can sell between typically between fifty to seventy five dollars on upwards to one hundred dollars a shirt. Again, that's for pre-owned, as Paul likes to call it, or as I like to call it, used clothing. I think pre-owned sounds better. <laughs> would you want to? Would you want to wear somebody's used clothing or somebody's pre-owned? I'm not going to wear your underwear, but I'll wear the used clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Carol. <laughs> What's that saying, Robert? I, mean, I keep saying about everybody has great t concert T-shirts. But Carol says, hey, Todd, are you drunk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Number eight, plus size women's clothing. Now, again, I, I've learned that the hard way. Guys, I'm going to mention jeans. Don't cut off. 
uh, <laughs> Lane Bryant jeans, larger size, larger women's sizes, or any kind of pants or any kind of clothing in a larger size. Like Lane Bryant is one of the brands. Uh, he also mentioned Tord. I, I know of Tord. I don't know that much about Tord, but apparently Tord makes some nicer clothing in the larger uh, sizes for women. So again, um, again, they sell relatively quickly. Uh, typically, they sell two to three times as quickly as pre-owned clothing, as Paul likes to call it. So again, any kind of larger sized women's or men's clothing for that matter. I mean, men, I mean, I know I don't like shopping for clothing. I mean, men, men are the, you know, the, the 2X, 3X, 4X guys. They love buying stuff online. They don't, they don't want to feel like going into a store and buying that stuff. That's true. I mean, I, you know, I, I wear 3X and because um, I'm one of those full figured guys. Um, but you don't buy pre on clothes. You buy off the. Buy I, I buy, off the no, I don't. <laughs> 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 but no, I do when I. When I do go into a store and I feel like I want to look to see what they have for shirts and stuff, I will start at the very end of the spectrum. I will go to the one size fits most and then go down and I'll stop. You know? Well, that was the other chip, too, that Casey brought up. And, and again, I haven't seen this in my um, thrift stores, but he says a lot of times thrift stores will have a separate section for large size, like women's clothing. They'll have like a separate section. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen. I've just seen it like you know, like small, medium, large, extra large. But, I mean, are you they will have a big section. It'll just be all like all assorted, uh, large sizes of women's clothing. I. When was the last time you went into a Goodwill or a Salvation Army, and you saw a guy looking into women's clothing? When was the last time? Probably me. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I cannot see myself doing it. And if I, I I'll do it. Hey, money, only, money, profits, profit. The only time I've done it is when Sandy is right by my side. <laughs> Megan says all the time. Thank you, Megan. Yeah, I I don't get it, Megan, because I'll be one of those guys giving that guy the the odd look, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's another one that's kind of. Eh, 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 eh. Uh, men's ties. One great uh, thing about men's dress ties are they're very easy to store. So, I mean, basically you fold them up and, you know, put them in a little poly bag or whatever. And, you know, they can store them flat. You label them when you can store them flat. But they have a very long uh, sell-through rate, typically, typically. Um, and, like, basic stuff, you know, like Tommy Hilfiger, you might get 8 to $10. So, if you're paying 3 to 4 I'm not going to mess it with the sell for 10 Um Sorry. But some of the better brands uh, have a quicker sell-through rate. And again, I'll bring it up. I mentioned them twice in the show. This has never happened before. Jamie Pace. Jamie Pace likes to sell designer men's ties. Uh, and one of the ties he likes to sell is those of our president. And he Trump, does, yeah. No, well, I didn't say no. <laughs> huh? no. I'm just kidding. Uh, oh. and they, they sell very, very well. Very, very yeah. well. Uh, Louis Vuitton. Burberry, Vineyard Vines, make Paul happy, Donald Trump, uh, Hermes, and Gucci. What about Garcia? Everybody's, I mean, I've done very, very well with Jerry Garcia ties. I had Jerry Garcia ties that were new. And again, I, I had them. They were sitting in my cash pile for like about a year and a half. And I, they don't, and again, Casey even brought that up. They don't sell like they used to. I think oh, I got wow. about fifteen or sixteen dollars, and that was including free shipping. And they were new; they were they weren't. Uh, Silverhead Stacker, Jerry Garcia had some good concerts. <laughs> well, you're right. Know. I just don't think you got right since you've been here. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't put it on there. <laughs> I um, I've even found some Beatles ties that really? I a couple I kept for myself. I was just looking through some of my. Uh, you know, straighten up some stuff. And I saw a, uh, a little uh, thing from the Beatles. Uh, I went and saw Beatles love uh, twice in Vegas. Yep. And I had like a little, like a brochure from the, from the concert nice. guys. Again, if, if when Vegas, Vegas is just opening up this week, that ever gets to the full force opening, do yourself a favor. Even if you're not a Beatles fan, go see love. Great, great show. Get your tickets early so you can sit down low. The, the lower seats are phenomenal. The upper, the higher level seats are just, eh. but you're still kind of low. You're still close to the action. And I have I have some pictures and videos and things on my on, on my channel with the uh, that show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and then we'll get into number ten to thirteen. 
and it's basically shoe brands. Um, I'm not a sneakerhead, so I'm not going to get into sneakers. Uh, basically, you have to do your research uh, on sneakers if you know the brands. Um, you know, again, I don't know what I don't. I don't know the Yeezys and the Jordans and all those things. And uh, yeah, I don't do. That. I know, I know uh, uh, Dave's in the chat, and I was uh, I was, I was like half joking with Dave. He was saying Stephen Curry. I'm thinking eh, Stephen Curry. It's Stephon Curry or Steph Curry, sir. I said, let's say Steve. He goes, yeah, it's Stephen Curry. No, no it's Steph Curry. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then they were Under Armour. Apparently, the brand, he, apparently he signed with Under Armour. But anyway, I'm not I'm not a secret head. But again, guys, look out for them. Uh, you'll see in that video that I posted from Rally Roots, he found some uh, some uh, nice uh, Avia uh, running shoes. Really, really sharp women's running shoes. Really, really sharp. Um, I think he said that that would pay for his whole outing. I don't know what he paid for him, $12 or $10. And he said they would sell for $40. So that would wow. basically pay for everything he purchased. All those vintage t-shirts he had purchased, that was all would all be profit because he'll make what he what he spent, make that back. Maybe it was $15, I think he said, with tax. They charge they have charged clothing, uh, sales tax on clothing in Florida. Uh, I think he said he had $15 and it would sell for $40. Wow. So again, so again, there, there's something. Chaz, I forget Chaz's station or channel, I mean. He's in Oregon, and he lives close to the Nike factory, so he's always buying, you know, stacks. Oh, I know you're talking about. I, I forget. Chaz, yeah, Chaz and his stacks wife. Of, stacks of Nikes. We have an, a Nikes outlet here, but when you research it, you find out that the shoes they sell in the outlets are made for the outlets. I brought that up on the show before, and people weren't aware of that. I just learned that a couple of years ago. Yeah. It's not just shoes. It's clothing in general. Yes. If you go to a, uh, a polo outlet, they have clothing there at the polo outlets for sale only at the polo outlets, not available online. And typically the quality is less. I'm not saying right. terrible quality. Yep. Ralph Lauren has the you know uh, traditional polo, but the quality is not nearly as good as the typical uh, polo Ralph Lauren clothing. And again, like you said, there's certain models that are at the um, uh, outlet stores. And the other thing you have to be careful with, again, I'm not a sneakerhead, uh, a lot of the seekers that go to Ross, they're they're seconds or they have imperfections, and I'm not a right, seeker. Exactly. Spot them, yeah. And there might be some little blemish or something somewhere, and that's why Ross got them as opposed to them selling them, you know, online. So you got to be careful with that too, as well. Right. But uh, so again, so sneakers are like a like kind of all separate category. I won't get into that. Uh, there are some sneakerhead guys out there that have shows just on that. Uh, Hustler Hacks, he did he does a lot with uh, Ross. And Marshall buying, you know, buying new and reselling. So if you want to look up sneakers, you can look up follow the various uh, sneaker resellers. Uh, but shoes, uh, number one was Birkenstock. Uh, Casey says they typically sell between forty to fifty dollars per pair for Birkenstock pairs, Birkenstock shoes. Uh, the other was the Doc Martin boots. Sell very well, and uh, they're they're very well made. And they sell quickly. Um, and the other one was uh, can you read my own handwriting here? Uh, uh, oh, the dance, uh, that a lot of the ladies wear in the, uh, women wear in the, uh, hospitals, nursing facilities, this type of things, because they're very, uh, dance go. Yeah. Dance go. Those go good with the yoga pants. They go well with yoga pants. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's find out in the chat because now you just mentioned a lot of different items. There's 20 something people in the chat. You mentioned. I have like three more if you want to interrupt me, but go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You, you mentioned men's clothes, women's clothes, ties, sneakers. What else was there in there? Um, men's shoes. Well, not shoes, and, but shoes in general. So how many people in the chat will actually go look for all those items? Not just one, but how many people in the chat will actually go through and source for all those items? Or um, sell all those items because you gotta know, like you you mentioned. Well, you can't, you can't, you know everything. But you, but you need to expand your. If you happen to go into a um, a Goodwill, let's say, and you're looking for electronics or whatever you're looking for, some hard goods, check out the shoe section. Check out the athletic shoes section. Right. Check out the men's tie section. Men's tie section. I go through men's tie sections like like a minute. Yeah. So I'm not going to pick up anything that's not going to sell for at least $20. I'm 
Right. I, I see a Tommy Hilfiger or I see a whatever, a, you know, a, a, I don't know, a basic, you know, polo tie Ralph Lauren. I'm not picking it up. Yeah. <laughs> now, if I find, you know, a, a Gucci or a Burberry or and I've never seen a Vineyard Vines tie ever in any of my. I have and I've never I've seen Vineyard Vines stuff and I've never picked it up. That you should pick up. Yeah, I. I guess the thing is, I just, it's been a year now. I just don't want to do, well, listen to me. I don't want to do clothes. What did I do? I bought like a half a pallet of new clothes. <laughs> but they're all uh, graphic tees and graphic hoodies and stuff. Well, I have a couple more I want to get to, and I want to talk a little about some other information I want to throw out there. Uh, Megan, you said on your Instagram video today or your live, whatever, on Instagram, that you're waiting for a pallet. Was it from Nordstrom's? I'm just curious, what what kind of is that clothing palette, or what, what kind of things you're expecting on your palette? You know, Megan, Megan's in the palette business, apparently. Wasn't aware. Yeah, of I'm it. finding I'm finding that's like some of the best way to go because now when I do, well, you got to be careful, and especially like with Walmart returns and some of those other oh, brands. returns. Yes, I'm not doing returns. I don't. I don't. Oh, Bloomingdale's and Nordstrom's. Okay. And what what kind of, is it? Clothing, Megan? Is it all clothing? Megan, you're not buying from Needless Markups. I mean, Neiman Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> those are the bloomingdales well that's the other thing too when i when i first started getting involved in this business oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay i wanted to, i wanted to try to do some of these uh you know palette buys and things and then my health kind of got crappy and i was like well and the other thing is you know when you have to pay extra for a um residential delivery yep you have to pay extra for a lift gate delivery so in other words in other words, I, I don't have a forklift. I can just pull up and uh, offload it. <laughs> so in other words, right. I have to drop it to the street. And then I don't know if, if they have a, a pallet jack with them or I actually like physically have to take each box from the street and walk it back to my garage. But I physically couldn't do that right now. But I'm hoping eventually my health will get somewhat better and I can get like, maybe just get like a, a like a Gaylord delivered. You know, like you guys, you see those big banana boxes? Well, we, yeah. we call them, the, in other words, it's right, kind of like Gaylords or like these high, yeah. big, huge boxes exactly. there's all stuff exactly. stuffed in there and they just shrink wrap over top of it i could probably do that uh or maybe find a local um liquidation place and just you know I'm, I'm eventually i want to get like a small or like a, like a small uh ford like fm50 and maybe tie that down in the back of the truck yep i just I bought a, do that i just bought a pickup oh did you buy a, buy a pickup yeah first time i had a pick ever in my life so I told my family, I says, I'm, I'm bringing Redneck home. <laughs> <laughs> Megan says, get, get her connection to Neiman Marcus, Paul. <laughs> I, you know, the funny thing, I, I got an email from a pallet uh, wholesaler today. Okay. And the big letters on the email, we do not do residential delivery. Oh, they don't do residential. Okay. Yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen. I don't that. have any hookups. So I, I used to work in the liquor stores. I used to have hookups in liquor stores, but I don't have anybody that could, you know, right. I had a hookup. Maybe make them make friends with your liquor store or some kind of local retailer and then have them drop it there and you go pick it up. Yeah. Okay, let me finish up this list and we'll get into a couple other things, guys. Um, number 14 is cashmere sweaters. Nice. She said, in Florida. Well, yeah, you're going to find a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> but Casey says they sell you around. Who's arguing with Casey? Uh, they seasonally they sell better, obviously, in the winter time and the fall. But I, and I guess maybe this is the time to pick them up, right? In the summertime, maybe people are doing the, the, the spring clean out, and maybe they donate the cashmere sweaters to, to Goodwills and Salvation Armies. So that was number thirteen. Number fourteen uh, are Masters. You know the Masters, the golf tournament. Masters yep. uh, golf polo shirts. And yeah, there's a lot of those here. You would probably do well at the Masters because that's Augusta, Georgia. Yep, I've found that? and sold quite a few. And apparently they have a very quick turnaround rate, sell-through rate. Um, I didn't – I don't know. Maybe I asked too much money for my stuff, so okay. I didn't Well, there, well there's the theory. theory. You know, the uh, the uh, fast nickel order slowed down. May right. have sold a cashmere sweater this morning. Nice. And she's in Texas. I don't know where she sold it, but I mean, you know, it's obviously it's warming up pretty much everywhere. I know uh, I was watching uh, uh, some videos and some of the research was just like, it's uh, 90 degrees here in Chicago. Yeah, it's been 90, <laughs> it's 90, here. 90 here today. Yeah, it's been 90 here here apparently it's sells year round. Like they say Christmas, sells, Christmas stuff sells year round. I mean, Christmas sweaters, I would think, sell year round, but Christmas ornaments 
apparently slow you around. Yep. And the fifteenth thing he listed was this is kind of like more of like a catch-all phrase: uh, trendy women's fashion. Again, the Lily Pulitzer, Kate Spade. Uh, I know Mark Jacobs made men's clothing. I knew he made some women's clothing. Apparently, he's the hot designer now for women's clothing. And then some of the boho brands like uh, Free People and Anthropology. I never find that here. I know out in the Midwest, you know, like in Portland and that kind of area, you can find more of that in your thrift stores. I never find that here. Okay. Uh, that was the clothing portion of our show. <laughs> Uh, were there any, let's just catch, catch up on the chat. Was there anything I met other than uh, Todd's constant, <laughs> other than Todd's constant uh, saying about concerts and t-shirts and whatnot? Was there anything I might have missed? Sharon says, Goth, anything still seems to do well for her? And we, we said that uh, Megan has sold a cashmere. Okay. A lot of people sell hats. I know that. A lot I, have, of yeah, I have some used uh, truck rats I have to list. I only have a handful of those. Yeah, I, used, I used to like, I used to get a, great deals on money. Ross, I used to pay three, four dollars and flip them for 15 to 20. But now, now they're like eight, 10, 12, 14 dollars. It's like, yep. well, there's no meat in the bone for, you know, right. And if I, then I got to pay, you know, you pay for shipping, you got to pay for your fees on the shipping and on the, on the sale price. So I, I pretty much stayed away from, unless I occasionally I'll find something online. I'll do some OA and I'll, I'll find some hats like basically clearance, but tip, especially now because of the pandemic, everybody's, not everybody, but a lot of people are doing, you know, online arbitrage. And so, I mean, it's, it's really, really difficult, at least for me to find anything to resell online. So, okay. So that was that. Um, uh, let's, let's just touch on it. We, we've still got about uh, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, free shipping. Uh, back in the day, I was offering free shipping. When I first started selling the jeans, I was building in a price, like say, I say, okay, I paid a dollar for these jeans. So I want to sell them for, for $10. And my shipping was seven dollars, so that's you know eighteen dollars ish, nineteen dollars, so twenty ish. So it's sold for like seventeen ninety nine, eighteen ninety nine. <laughs> Best wants to give me an accountability uh, re resale call. It's going to call me every week. <laughs> yeah, let's put your number in the chat. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> Everybody can call you like on the hour. Did you list those jeans yeah. yet? Did you list those jeans yet? <laughs> so, what's your opinion about free shipping? Especially now with, with with shipping, basically even on the first, I used to offer it on free on first class, but then uh, again, now now it's based on distance plus weight. I I am I don't do free shipping anymore. I give the best price I can, or that I want to at the time, and I add shipping. I have it uh, calculated. Basically, whatever the shipping costs you, like I said, again, guys. I mean, it's not a lot of money, but remember, you are paying roughly fifteen percent commission. On that shipping, so yep. if, you're, if you're if you're paying ten dollars, let's make it round number ten dollars. You know, by the time you pay eBay and you pay PayPal, well, well it's not going to be PayPal anymore. That's another story. We're not going to talk about managed payments today, guys. We're not going there. <laughs> yep. well, by the time you pay PayPal and you pay eBay, you're fourteen, fifteen percent. You know, so that's that's a dollar and a half one on a ten dollar shipping. So you got to factor in the right. cost of your uh, your commissions on your shipping as well. Yeah, I mean, but on the other hand, for me is I think I only have 18 items up on eBay. I took everything down and I am- Well, yeah, when you said we were getting ready to move, you took it down, right? No, no, when we went home last time. I oh, when you went home, you had never relisted, never- uh, Had 600 listings, took them you all You said down. you sold similar, though, most of that stuff. I sold similar for 220 of them. And then as they started to sell, I didn't put more stuff up. What I did is I- put it on Amazon FBA okay. that way. I feel that because we're going to go home again now, I think in July for a few weeks, I'll wake up and Amazon will say, Oh, we just shipped and sold this item for you. And I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about closing my store or anything like that. Uh, Beth brought up too. And, and I, and I was saying, I sold all my newer things, all my new things. Uh, Almost everything I sold that was new what, sold through promoter listings too. I didn't have a lot. I was offering like two percent because that was the other thing. You know, do you do promoter listings or not? Do you do sales or not? Well, we're not going to touch on that thing. But anyway, I would do like the two percent just so I would get that additional listing. Uh, some people do seven, eight, nine. I'm not paying seven, eight, nine percent and paying them another thirteen percent or ten. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll do two percent so I get a basically a duplicate listing. Yeah, when I did it, I did one percent because if you right. look now, granted the stuff I'm selling. 
is stuff like this, you know, an action figure that maybe everybody in their mother is going to sell. So there could be 50 listings of it. But do you think 50 people are actually doing promoted listings? Probably not. Not a collectible. No. 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 So maybe 10 people. So if I did 1%, now I'm at least one of the top 10. Right, right. That's the way I looked at it. But free shipping, I think I'm over that now. I think, you know, let me offer a decent price. The only problem is that Amazon has built such a, such a monster with that. And then uh, and then what I'm reading in, in a lot of these reselling groups, which I try not to read because then you'll get bogged down on Facebook and reselling groups and, you know, you can be more productive than other things is um, – uh, the returns because people are used to getting free shipping. They want free shipping and they expect to, if they don't like something for whatever reason, they want to return it and they, they expect it to be free, free uh, returns. True. And, and that I got, now I've had my Amazon account for, I think eight or nine years. Right. And I got my first return a few weeks ago. You had it for eight or nine years and this is the first return you ever had. Yep. I sent I sent in a it was a huge package, plastic bubble wrap, you know, the kind that you have to actually cut to open. Right. right. Sealed, brand new. It was an old uh what is it? Uh Gemini. Is it Gemini? Genie garage door opener. Okay, right? sure, sure. The books, the cords, the power right. cords, everything. And I sold it for a hundred and something, 120 bucks, I think it was, because that's okay. what the going rate was. Sure, sure. This is what I got back. So you had somebody's used one that they yep. They swapped it out. So I told Amazon, I said, listen, what I sent in to you guys was brand new with all the literature, with all the books, with all the cords. And they said, Well, send me pictures, send me this, send me that. And they gave me full credit. Um now so, were you able to were you able to you had an email? You don't you don't talk to anybody like a live person on Amazon, do you? No, when you put in a report, um within an hour somebody called me. Oh, it escalates and somebody will call you? Okay, yeah. I wasn't aware yeah. of it. Okay. Yeah. I was very skeptical though, because of course that? hello, this is Bobby. You know, one of those yeah. like right. really, you know. <laughs> what I was you, problem with with the eBay customer service, if you would call during the day, it would be craziness, craziness. Yeah, but um, I mean, and I thought, you, you call certain hours, you would get the state support. So now, like, I don't even know where the support's coming from, if any. Um, and then the yeah. last prior two years, I had concierge services. I paid for the eBay open ticket, so they didn't yeah. have it this year. So I mean, not that I used it a lot, but am I gonna am I gonna lose the concierge service now? I don't know. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just when they called, it says like Amazon never calls. And if I call on the concierge line, they're gonna say. Uh, Mr. Adam, you don't have concierge service anymore. Call, call the regular line number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what yeah, do you I, I don't do I don't do free shipping and I don't do free returns either. And I, I think Maggie said she she has never done free shipping and she never will. Yeah. Okay. What guys? What, what what's your opinion? Do, will you do free shipping? And I have, uh, to me, free shipping is yeah. Neither here nor there. Maybe yes, maybe no, depending on the item. But I'm not doing free returns because the thing is, eBay's going to force you to take a return anyway. Yes, so. but okay. If you, if we put in every little thing about the item, if this is the item, every little mild imperfection, yeah, in the description, you know, on the top Pictures there, the and regular a, description, yeah, like have like a pen pointing to the item. Yeah, it has a little here, and this is bad right. here. Every little thing, and then what I do is I'll copy and paste that into the bottom of the description. They're gonna say, well, you know, I bought it, and it had this little thing here. Yeah, just like it said in the description. Right. True. eBay will back you up. So that's what I, you know, I tell everybody. So hey, you're welcome yeah. to return it, but I'm, you're going to you're going to pay for the return shipping. Exactly. Because I don't have a problem with returns. I have no problem with returns as long as they're legitimate. I don't want to get I don't want to get a used uh, garage door opener when I ship somebody a, a hundred fifty dollar one. They send me a broken, you know, three dollar one. Right. Exactly. That's the biggest thing. I mean, not. I get a free returns. She won't do free shipping, but she does free returns. <laughs> and it best says, "Oh, Maggie, dude, I thought I knew you." <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I still I still have top rated, so it really hasn't hurt me at all. 
doing that. Well, that's the other thing too. You, I mean, I'm I'm above standard, then there's top rated, and there's top rated plus. Yep. So you have to do a certain amount of dollar volume to be top rated, and then you have to offer free returns to get top rated plus. Right. And the way I'm going, I'll never make it anymore because I'm just not listing on eBay. Right. You know, I do all the auctions. Well, I right, between the auctions and the uh, Amazon, right? That's 99% of your business goes that route. Right. I haven't done an auction in two weeks now. So, well, you're uh, busy with your estate sale. <laughs> right. Which I never recommend anybody doing. Don't do your own estate sales. Maggie, Maggie Doodle says, the mysterious workings of the resellers in mind. <laughs> That's another topic, Maggie. We're going to have you on one day. We're going to have two or three people on. We can discuss the uh, mysterious uh, workings of the resellers' minds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing I want to do real quick, guys, I'm, I'm probably just going to end up post this in the uh, description below. I was just doing some you know, research for the show. I just Let me do a screen share with this. <laughs> Okay. Couple things. I was talking to Paul about this earlier. Uh, you're going to see me drink on the water because I know it shows up with me on the side here. A little dry throat from my allergies. There is a way to do research on, on eBay, and I, I really have to really uh, bear down on it. It's kind of it's kind of nested in the eBay. Uh, I told Paul I may make a video discussing this. But you'll see here it says the explore best sellers as trending now, what it's worth, and best sellers. If you scroll down here, it says best sellers electronics. You're not, you're not sharing if you were trying to share the screen. I'm not sharing. Nope. Why is it not sharing? Did you hit uh, share screen and then I did do. I did do it. We tried again. Uh boom, 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 boom. You know what? That was my fault. Let's see. Here we go. Now it should work. That's why I usually have my phone up. I told you that fiasco I had last time. Do you see it now? Yep. Yeah, because that's... <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, this is nested on, on eBay. If you, you punch in on eBay, you know, uh, you know, best-selling items or whatever, you'll find it. Uh, it's nested about three or four levels down. Uh, th there's your, you know, your main page and your daily deals, whatever. Um but it has trending now, what it's worth, best sellers. So these are best sellers, and you can search in here, and this, you, know, you have the various marketplaces, you know, USA, Australia, you know, New Zealand, et cetera, et cetera. But here it's like best selling electronics. Um, I was telling, I was kind of weird about this. It's like, why is uh, women's bras? Why are they best sellers? I guess because people can't purchase them at retail, so they're buying them online. Uh, you know, again, this this is a ten dollar polo shirt. I don't want to sell a ten dollar polo shirt, <laughs> and that's with free shipping. Um, Adidas uh, collectible items. Again, you can you can just do your research. Like I said, uh, uh, this I don't understand. How how can you do a, a phony bill for ninety nine cents? I don't know how they I don't know how to get away with this because it's I mean it's not counterfeit, but um, and like and just weird stuff here. I mean, liquid fart spray can. And how is that a bestseller? I don't know if these are just people that are paying for promoted listings. That's where they put it here. Uh, trending now. Let's see. This makes more sense, I guess. See if this will load. Can you see the screen with the Ford Force Ferrari? Can you see that? Yep. Okay. I can see that. Game Boy, I can see. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, I could see. Uh, baseball cards. Why baseball cards? Why are 2020 baseball cards selling? We talked I know, earlier about I know a lot of people are going nuts over the latest basketball cards. Right. We talked about Yeezys before. And I guess I'm not a sneaker, right? Yeezys. Kobe Bryant. We know Kobe Bryant is hot. But since he passed, it's hot. Uh, apparently, the Chiefs things are hot. We all know face masks are hot, you know, with everything that's going on. They're going to be hot for quite some while. Um, but anyway, yeah. So basically, guys, you can just do your own research in here. And uh, you do clothing. You put in various brands. Uh, I will, I'm going to put a link to that later. Uh, one other thing I want to show you, let me get out of this screen. And I'll show you this other, uh, let's see. Find the other one I had open. I want to show you guys real fast. Star Trek cards. Really? <laughs> let me show you this one here. Uh, all right, we'll do this one. 
And we'll do that, and we'll do this. This you should be able to see now. All right, Paul, tell me if you can see this. Yep. I just did was doing some pre-show research, and uh, apparently this guy is, is a reseller, and he, like everyone else, the larger resellers, he has uh, various eBooks and things that he wants to sell you, so he wants you to sign up. Uh, but what I did was I just did some research on his um, his page, um, talking about selling vintage T-shirts. And again, you know, how, how do you determine if something is vintage or not? We talked about the single stitch and the loop stitch. Uh, we talked about the made in the USA. Uh, selling vintage T-shirts, you know, it obviously it's usually better price to pick it up at garage or yard sales. Uh, then he talks about selling vintage T-shirts, thrift store clothing. Again, you're going to pay up a little bit more at thrift stores. So I will put that um, that link to this page in the description below. Uh, again, here's how to identify vintage T-shirts. Sift for telling if a T-shirt is a repo, a reproduction. Again, that's where I would be kind of screwed up. And then it talks about selling vintage T-shirts on eBay and Etsy. So I will include that in the description below. I wanted to show you guys that. Um, we were pushing a little over an hour, so I wanted to, you know, I would, to... I would tell people, too, if you're looking for vintage or you come across vintage T-shirts at a garage sale and the sleeves are cut off, literally just cut off, you can see it, um, still get them because I found a Metallica one that was vintage but had no sleeves. And I think it sold for 30 bucks. I think I paid dollar 50 for it actually i saw something it was a um a cut off uh sweatshirt and apparently it was made that way it wasn't just cut off by the person they yeah. sold like cut off sweatshirts and uh again this is when i was talking about telling you about the vintage t-shirts and shirts whatnot and they, they were they wanted like 50 or 60 dollars for it you know on youtube right like well <laughs> it's all well and good if it was for me personally but I, I, there's no what there's no meat on the bone to resell that right exactly Maggie, you have to run. Thank you for being here. I'm getting ready to shut things down anyway. Appreciate you being here. You know, I appreciate you always being here for me. And uh, don't want to forget Michelle, my moderator. Uh, so, guys, yeah, basically that was it. I wanted to cover, and again, I'll put all those links in there. And again, it's um, uh, is selling used clothing or pre-owned clothing, as, as Paul likes to call it, worth it? Depends. If you have access to better quality things. Um, if you know, uh, vintage t-shirts, if you understand that, if you're, and again, a lot of people that know vintage t-shirts are vintage t-shirt collectors. So like I, when yeah. you watch that video that I have up from Ryan, uh, from Raleigh roots, he talks about that. He buys for himself, you know, vintage t-shirts, concert t-shirts, whatnot. So he's very familiar with what vintage and what's not. So he can just kind of like, you know, ruffle through the racks and say, okay, this looks vintage. And then say, okay, is this worth selling or not? So, um, and again, again, I'm not telling you to, to sell all those, those various things that Casey talks about. You may not be able to find those things, but, you know, broaden your horizons, you know, maybe get into shoes a little bit, maybe look for vintage concert t-shirts. Right. If you were scratching. Um, did you have something to say? Vita, Vita McC McCoy. If you have an uncut sheet, then you, it's worth it. Um, just look it up. Definitely just look it up. Yeah. Paul, Paul knows all about collectibles, toys, and the, uh, games and collectibles figurines and that type of stuff so uh yeah where was your research at um ebay's the best the best lately okay just 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 do the souls on ebay yeah just do uncut sheet star trek cards and there's probably going to be several different ones okay very good sir all right, guys, I want to thank you. We were average about 20 people. I know we're, we're, we're filtering down here. People have to leave. They have to get back to their to their work and their families. But I appreciate you guys for all for being here. Uh, and again, I, I know I keep bringing this up. Like, like you know, uh, I really would appreciate you guys playing some of these videos that you maybe you haven't seen in the past. Uh, have a lot of great reseller interviews. You don't have to physically watch them. You can play them like a podcast. That's how they work. Uh, play them in the background while you're listening or whatever. And then... Uh, if you hear something that's interesting, you can always stop for a minute or two and, you know, have a sip of water, get a cup of coffee or whatever, and watch that, that little piece that's interests you. But if you just play it in the background, it helps me with my watch hours, and I'm trying to get monetized. Uh, as I said, I spend quite a bit of money trying to improve my channel. I have some camera equipment. Uh, I'm going to need a new PC to stream better and some software and whatnot, and um, nothing nothing's free in this world. So appreciate you guys. If you watch, watch the, uh, the previous shows, uh, please make sure you hit the uh, thumbs up on your way out. And if you're not subscribed, 
Uh, please consider subscribing and um, sharing this on your social media. Okay, guys, hope you all have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye.